So, drunken dishes. They're an absolute classic from the Zhejiang province and relatively famous the world over. But here's the confusing bit. The English term drunken has seemed to be the go-to translation for two similar but still distinct cooking methods, zhao and zui. Zui is what you might already be familiar with. Basically, you soak stuff, most notably chicken, in a boozy spice shaoxing wine-based brine. Zhao is super similar at first blush. You soak stuff in the same way and you serve cold in the same way. But in place of the brine, it uses this stuff, zaolu pickle sauce. Now, for the uninitiated, zaolu is aggressively awesome. It's got this heavy kick of umami and its fragrance is pretty unparalleled. So even though it's one of my personal favorite snacks to whip up, we've always held off in the past because, you know, it just kind of feels like the type of thing that'd be impossible to buy outside China. But every time I go back to the USA, I do always kind of like to check inventory at Chinese supermarkets there and see what's available. And to our surprise, Zhao Lu was around, under the name Pickle Sauce. Awesome. Now, using Zhao Lu is really dead simple, so we thought it might also be interesting to show you how it's made. Fair warning, though, that making Zhao Lu will likely be even tougher on the sourcing front than just picking up a bottle. So if you just want some quick, drunken snacks, feel free to jump ahead about two minutes in the video. Okay, so say you've just made a big batch of Huangzhou rice wine. Congratulations, drink up. But after straining, you find you're left with all this leftover sediment, the lees. The stuff smells awesome, so it feels like it'd be a waste to toss it, but it's got like the consistency of mud and the taste isn't much better. This is zaoni, literally translated fermented mud. And this is the base of zaolu. So first things first, take 200 grams of zaoni and mix it with 500 grams of some proper Shaoxing wine. Break it up a bit so it's more or less incorporated, then toss it in the fridge to soak for at least a few hours or ideally overnight. Next, to a liter of water or stock up to you, toss in one dried bay leaf, a half a cinnamon stick, two pieces of sand ginger, two white cardamom pods, a quarter teaspoon fennel seed, and a quarter teaspoon whole Sichuan peppercorn. Then to make this properly briny, add in a tablespoon half salt together with 15 grams of rock sugar. Cover with a plate, toss on a rapidly bubbling steamer, and steam that for at least 45 minutes to let the spices infuse. After that time, remove the spice water and add in a tablespoon and a half of MSG. If you're using some good homemade stock, you actually don't need the MSG here, though if it was me, I'd probably still add a touch anyhow. Then once the spice water is completely cooled down to room temperature, spoon in the soaked zaoni and wine. And once it's good and mixed in, we can strain. So this part here is a little on the annoying side, so it helps to have one of these little soy milk straining bags if possible. Spoon the liquid in and let it slowly drain out. This process here is called diao zao, and traditionally people would actually just hang this up for a bit to save some labor and get a higher yield. Once you're done though, you can tell that the sauce will still be looking a bit on the muddy side. If you don't care, no worries, use as is. The bottled stuff will usually get filtered though, so to get a bit of a nicer look, we'll leave this in the fridge overnight and let any sediment sink to the bottom. Next day, scoop out the sauce and it's good to use. There you have it, some homemade zalu pickle sauce, even better than the bottle. Just gotta beg, borrow, or steal your way into some Shaoxing wine lees. Okay, ready for how to use the bottled stuff? Prepare yourself. Get a bottle of Zalu. Open it. Pour it in a box. And that's pretty much it. You can optionally top with a touch of Shaoxing wine if you want it a bit boozier, but this is basically ready to soak stuff in. Now there's no real limit to what you can add. In Zhejiang, you can find everything from quail egg to duck tongue. But today we went with edamame, shrimp, and tofu. So first up, edamame. 500 grams worth, first make sure that your beans are thoroughly rinsed, then snip both sides with a pair of scissors. You want to snip both sides to let the brine infuse into the bean. This process can be a touch annoying though, so definitely enlist friends or family. It's not an uncommon sight in the region to see families snipping edamame together over television after dinner. Then with all those snipped, we can boil. So before tossing those in, optionally add a few star anise to your boiling water if you'd like then toss in your edamame. We won't want these guys at too heavy of a boil because if the beans are jostling around too much, they can sometimes pop open a bit. So just cover, lower the flame to medium high, and boil for nine minutes. Then after nine minutes, strain the beans and once they're roughly room temperature, they can go straight into the zaolu. Now for the shrimp, we'll be moving into our terribly lit kitchen because I prefer to move fast when boiling seafood. So now toss 250 grams of the freshest shrimp you can possibly get into some boiling water. In an ideal world, the shrimp should still be kicking when you add them in. Cover, wait about 30 seconds or so, 
then check on the shrimp. What you're looking for is the shrimp to be ever so slightly buoyant, or you can alternatively wait for the smallest shrimp to start floating, or after about 90 seconds. Then strain and shock with cool running water to stop the cooking process. Now we'll be keeping the shells on, but removing the heads and legs. Two ways to do it. What I like doing is pinching down behind the head and just pulling it off, then removing the legs with my hands. The more proper way is to use a pair of scissors to slice off the head at a 45 degree angle, then continue onto the legs. The latter is prettier, the former is easier, I think, up to you. Then once those are mostly dry, they'll be good to toss in the zalu. Now for the tofu, we're using four pieces, or about 120 grams of dogan, which is a sort of hyper-firm tofu. Pretty easy to prep, just cut into about one inch by two inch rectangles, then toss in some boiling water. This tofu will be cooked in about a minute, so after that time, take it out and let it dry. So now just add all your blanched ingredients to your zalu. For all this here, we needed two boxes and thus two bottles worth. Then cover, toss in the fridge, and let it soak for at least four hours or up to 24. Now, after that time, if I'm just making this as a snack for myself, I'll usually just eat it straight from the box. But we are on YouTube, so let's make things pretty and plate this up. Just drizzle some of the brine all over everything, and with that, you've got a pretty easy, incredible tasting snack or appetizer. So traditionally, zalu is a very much a winter thing because the food wouldn't go bad in cold weather. Uh, but now with refrigeration, you can have this all year round. But of course, this is still really good in winter, especially if you wash it down with a little bit of good Shaoxing wine. So right, uh, check out the link in the description box for detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.